Hi, I'm Roger Woods with the Wald Lake Church of Christ. Thank you for joining me today for this video sermon for February the 19th, 2023. Time's moving along. Uh, today here at the Wald Lake Church, we're going to be a little empty. Uh, we have a big group has gone down to Winterfest in Gatlinburg, Tennessee, and are gathering together with about 12,000 others for a big youth uh, convention down there. They're having a great time. We will miss them up here. Our numbers will be down, uh, but we know that we are together in spirit as we are with you uh, who have joined me on this lesson today. Thank you for joining me. Our lesson today uh, is continuing uh, the series that I started last week. Uh, the love of God. What does that mean to us? How does that change us? How does that, most importantly, change those who we're trying to share the love of God with? Love is so important. And to talk about that importance, I want to read from the first letter of John, chapters 4, 7 through 10, and then verses 16 through 18. Dear friends, let us love one another. For love comes from God, and everyone who loves is born of God and knows God. Whoever does not love does not know God, because God is love. This is how God showed his love among us. He sent his one and only Son into the world that we might live through him. This is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son as an atoning sacrifice for our sins. God is love. Whoever lives in love lives in God and God in them. This is how love is made complete among us so that we have confidence on the day of judgment. In this world, we are like Jesus. There is no fear in love. Perfect love drives out fear because fear has to do with punishment. And the one who fears is not made perfect in love. God's love overcomes fear. Hmm. Do you have Frigga Triskai decaphobia? Hmm. A recent study was done by Stress Management Center and Phobia Institute, and it revealed that 17 to 21 million people in the United States are affected by this phobia. The head of the study uh, writes, it's been estimated that 800 to 900 million dollars is lost to business each year due to people impacted by this phobia behavior. They won't fly or do business they would normally do as a result of it. Have you figured it out yet? Now, if I added a hint, would it help? If I added that the number 13 is involved? Y yeah, now you're starting to get the idea. It's Friday the 13th, right? Exactly. Rationally, that's it's not an unlucky day. Unless you have Frigga Triskai decaphobia. That's the term psychologists give for that small number of people who are afraid of Friday the 13th. It's named after Frigga, the Norse goddess uh, whom we name Friday for, uh, and Triska decaphobia, which is the fear of the number 13. Why fear a simple number like 13? You know, the Vikings considered it a lucky number. But due to the importance of the number 12 in Judaism and Christianity, you know, 12 tribes, 12 apostles, and the dating of the year, 12 months, and how we tell time, 24 hours, divides perfectly into 12 hours, a.m., p.m., day, night, halves, uh, for these, and I'm sure more reasons, the number 13 has long been considered unlucky. Buildings are built and you ride the elevator and you go from 12 to 14. You don't go from 12 to 13 to 14. You go to 12 to 14. They just leave the number out. It's unlucky. Yet, there is no scriptural taboo on that number. Only a fear factor learned through our culture. You know, fear is a big determining factor in a lot of the decisions that we make day in and day out. Scripture reveals to us that Perfect love casts out fear. 
When we put our trust in our Heavenly Father, those things that we feared, they begin to fade away. Not right away. Not like, you know, just, I'm, I'm cured. No, it, it's more like moving on to the next day, after Friday the 13th. And later we can then look back and, and see how God's love shepherded us through our fears. We have to be reminded, and that is best accomplished when we intentionally build in opportunity to be reminded. And that's why attending church is so important, studying God's Word, uh, living in Christ, and reminding ourselves of what He has done for us. There's a song that I used to sing when I was in college uh, in devotionals. And it is a, a song that still comes to my mind when I'm dealing with my fears. And yes, I confess, I still deal with it. Here's the song. He signed my deed by his atoning blood. He ever lives to make his promise good. Though all the hosts of hell march in to make a second stand, they all march out at the mention of his name. They all march out at the mention of his name. They all march out at the mention of his name. Jesus. 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 There's just something about that name. There's just something about that name. Whew. Looking around right now, it just seems like the hosts of hell are marching into second, take a second stand, doesn't it? Now, look around us. We're on the verge of world war in Europe. Uh, our own country is far from peaceful. And our kids can't even attend college classes without being shot and killed. Morally, our country is confused. The economy keeps changing, making families less stable economically. And then just to add a little spice to our lives, there's always the danger of an extinction event caused by an asteroid hitting the Earth. Now, granted, the chances of this happening are astronomically small, but that doesn't keep it from the headlines, does it? <laughs> you know, it's just scary time to live especially without Christ in your life. But with Christ, we can have peace in the midst of all of this. Our text today reminds us that perfect love casts out fear, given the chance. Thankfully, God is patient with his children and their struggles with fear. Last week, I shared with you my own journey towards an understanding and letting God's love inhabit me. I shared about the conflict I felt for years between a works-based righteousness, kind of working in the background, and truly trusting Jesus for my salvation. I also struggled with fear of breaking from tradition, which led me to preach with the wrong heart. All of this was happening because I didn't let God's love fully work in my life. It was not perfected. Now you might say, will it ever be perfected? Good question. And the answer to this question comes from understanding this whole issue from a different point of view. Let me ask you this. Have you ever considered that you might be immature? Now, I, I know that's the last thing that I, as a 63-year-old man, want to be told. But if it's true, then it's the thing I need to hear. I am immature if fear still controls me. Not reasonable caution, but those irrational fears that all of us have from time to time. What does emotional maturity have to do with God's perfect love? Well, everything, really. The Greek word used for fear in the New Testament that we translate, or excuse me, the Greek word used for perfect in the New, New Testament that we translate perfect has a broader meaning than the way we commonly use the word perfect in English. Teleos is the word. 
And according to the Greek English lectionary, the word has been used or was used in ancient Greek to convey the idea of completeness, as in a project assembled, the job is done. And it can also refer to personal maturity. To think of teleos in the sense of perfectionism keeps us from realizing the perfect love of God in our lives. As many of you know, and as you just heard, I like to sing. And I am a singer. I sing with a chorus called the Madrigal Chorale. I love doing it. It is so fun. We just had a concert this past week down at the University of Michigan. A wonderful time. We, we sang the Michigan State uh, uh, song uh, in solidarity with them after the tragic events that took place there this past week. Um, but we, it was a great event to get together and just share that joy of singing. And it certainly brought joy to all of us. But as we were up there on stage getting our little rehearsal done before the concert, um, you know, our, 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 our instructor, I mean, our instructor, our director stopped us because we, we were just nervous and we, we were not getting notes right. And, you know, even though we'd gone through hours of rehearsal individually at home uh, and as a group uh, together, we, we, were, we were just messing up. But, you know, he stopped us. And he said, guys, guys, remember, I'd rather you have performed well than perfectly. And we just kind of looked at him, what? And he goes, you know these notes. Don't be so worried about it. Enjoy it. Smile, sing out. It'll come to you. <laughs> you know, that's interesting. And the interesting thing is that after that little talk, when we focused then on enjoying the experience instead of missing a note, wow, it, our sound completely changed. You know, we had done the work. It was in our head. Now was the time at that concert just to trust that and enjoy the act of singing. You know, when we focus on perfectionism in our spiritual walk with God, it's going to lead to some unfortunate outcomes. And I can think of a few. I'm sure there are more. One of them is that our stress levels are going to go through the roof. It's like we're trying to walk through a minefield where one misstep destroys our eternal souls. <laughs> You're done. <laughs> now, I'm not recommending throwing caution to the wind. That would be unwise. However, fear of stepping on mines has a tendency to keep us from moving at all, even when God is directing us to do just that. Yeah, I understand the Pharisees all too well. They were so invested in their system that anything, even a word from God, became a threat to their status in the society and among themselves. You know, this makes me respect and try to emulate the faith displayed by Nicodemus and Joseph of Arimathea. They did not let their fear of what they might lose keep them from following God. Secondly, fear leads to a defensive and reactive way of living that sucks the joy out of our life. You know, Jesus said in John 15, verse 11, that he wants to make our joy complete. Mm, back to that word teleos. Our joy can't be complete if we think we have to earn God's love by being perfect. We cannot work for his love. He already loves us. The only way we can access the fullness of his love for us is to accept it through his son Jesus and then abide in Christ. Now, I'm not talking about joy the way our culture does. You know, we've made an idol of one phrase out of our Declaration of Independence, the pursuit of happiness. And we sacrifice uh, to that God from our financial means. Matter of fact, it often gets the first fruits over God himself. No, I, I don't want to be happy. And I don't have to be happy to be filled with the joy that comes in Christ. 
Indeed, I will find joy in Christ, no matter what the financial, moral, political, cultural mess is around me or in my life. Why? Because my joy is in Christ and not in things or in others. Finally, perfectionism can actually cause us to commit the very thing that we're trying not to do. What's on your mind will soon be seen in your actions. I know I have experienced this very thing as I have tried over the last 20 or so years to understand and deal with my lactose intolerance and, and finally to accept it. When I first realized what my problem was, it, it took a while to accept it. The more I thought about it, oh man, the more I wanted a Wendy's Frosty. I loved Wendy's Frosties. Ah. Now, eventually negative reinforcement cured my desire for Frosties. But the more I thought about them, the more I wanted them, no matter what happened. Perfectionism made me think that I could cheat just a little bit because it really wasn't my problem. Just a little was my problem, not... You know, a lot was my problem, not just a little. No, no. Perfectionism makes us claim a status we can't maintain. When we accept the love of God and Christ, then we admit our imperfection and accept the help our Lord has offered, especially through the indwelling of his spirit. Emotional maturity. <laughs> Emotional maturity accepts our faults and acts differently than perfectionism. It realizes that no one is perfect. As Isaiah said in Isaiah 53, verse 6, all we like sheep have gone astray. Perfectionism is humanly impossible. But because of our perfect Savior, we can be complete, complete in our love for God and others. We can be mature. By his stripes we are healed. By his perfect life we can become complete, mature, and stand unashamed before our Lord. There is a lot of fear in our world today, and it is tempting to stir that fear up and make it stand out bold, scare people into faith. Well, just look around the world today and you can see how that approach works. Yeah, it's not productive for our society, and it certainly is unproductive in the kingdom of God. In fact, those in the world are looking for a place of peace in a troubled world. That is what we are to be, church. Jesus prayed that God's will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We need to be that place, that heaven on earth, where people can come and find peace and be unafraid. How do we do that? Well, actually, it's quite simple. We remember. We remember God's perfect love expressed in the gift of his son, Jesus Christ. We remember that it is a gift, not a commodity that we purchase. It was purchased for us through sacrifice and the shedding of innocent blood. All so that we could love God, the God who created us in his image. And friends, if you think about it, if we are created in his image, then our natural state is not one of fear. Our natural state is a state of love. Yes, we are only human, ah, but that means we are image bearers. When we accept that and let his image fill us, the image of the God who is love, then we will receive relief from the fear that otherwise would have us by the throat. Relief from corrosive stress. Relief from defense, from living a defensive, reactive, and joyless life. Relief from being controlled by our desires. Freedom to be who we are. 
children of God who shine like stars in the universe as we hold out the word of life to a lost and dying generation. The living word of God in whom we have peace, not as the world views peace, but a peace that passes all understanding. He signed my deed and he signed yours too. Through his love, we no longer need to be controlled by fear. Indeed, we can be more than conquerors of those fears if we will only let the God of love fill us and make our life complete. Have a blessed day.